talk about tooling API. So while we are on the subject of tooling API, I would like to briefly mention about API. I am sure that all of us must be aware about APIs. API are a way by which two applications talk to each other. Applic API stands for application programming interface. And uh, whenever we use some application on the mobile phone or uh, some desktop or IoT devices, it just connect to the internet and sends the data to the server. The server then retrieves the data and interpret it. It sends us the response, which will which is interpreted by our application and show us response in the whichever way the end user um, finds it easy to retrieve. So as we all know that Salesforce is a API first platform. It provides us numerous APIs, which are as follow. REST API, SOAP API, Connect REST API, User Interface API, Analytical REST API, Bulk API, Metadata API, Streaming API, Apex REST API, Apex SOAP API, and Tooling API. We can consume Tooling API in two forms, REST and SOAP. Uh, it, it returns us the response in two format, JSON and XML. It also allows us to get the response in a custom manner. It communicates in a synchronized manner. So let's talk about tooling API. Uh, tooling API is powerful API, which allow us to have fine grain access to the metadata. We can use it to build custom de development tools for lightning platform applications. It provide us the fine grain access. So we do not need to get the whole grain access of the data. Like in the case of metadata API, it also makes it little faster than metadata API. It also provides us SQL capabilities. It has some uh, predefined objects by, by using them. We can retrieve the smaller piece of the metadata API. The best part of the tooling API is that we can also consume it from the developer console, which simply make the query in the query editor and check this box here, use tooling API and click on the execute button. It will return us the response like all the other SOQLs. Now a question arrives in the mind that like Salesforce is a uh, API first platform. It uses API in the several manners, like where we use APIs, tooling API. So I guess we should, we all are aware about developer console and whenever we click on some class or some objects. So whenever we click on this, it makes a tooling API query and load the code for the same. Whenever we use some trailhead, it gives us the steps to clear. Whenever we click on chat challenge, it goes to straight to the our Salesforce org and checks whether we have covered all the steps it arrived. Like uh, we have made the same list with this name or not. So it covers the whole codes metadata and check whether we have completed steps or not. If yes, then it will show us the completed message. If not, then it will show us the corresponding error for the same. So it is the best example of using the tooling API. Yes, it is used elsewhere, but these are just simply two examples. So as I told you that it provides us SQL, uh, SQL capabilities. So here are list of some objects, which is provided by it. Like Apex class, we can access the body of any Apex class or the API version of that using the Apex class object. We can make a query on it. Uh, like if you want to check some things about validation rule, if it's valid or not, what is the error message in that? So we can simply check it from tooling API. And if you have deployed something from environment, different environment of Salesforce, and you want to check the details of that. So it allows us to, to check the same. So here is a list. I have provided the link in the references section of this presentation.
So here is the list of all the objects which is provided by Salesforce by which we can query. It provided us the well, well graphed access. It has the documentation like what the fields we can query and what is the properties of that field. If the manageable states of the field is managed or not, or like we can simply check from it. Here is the example of validation tool SOQL. As I stated before, we can write query in the query editor, like select active description validation name from validation rule. So it will give us the response in the same as manner as the other SOQLs. But please, but please don't uh, forget to check this mark here. Otherwise you will not be able to make tooling API queries. In, in case of uh, Apex class, we can also make queries like body, but uh, I have stated the few fields of it, API versions, namespace prefix and manageable state. So we can easily access each one of them. Now, the another question is when to use tooling API, like we are, what is the need of using it? So uh, tool, uh, when you just need a piece of data from the Salesforce org, like uh, when you need to deploy a page directly from the production and afraid of overwriting it, like there is one scenario, like you have done very well things in your, uh, in your sandbox or the scratch org, and you deployed the same into your uh, production org. But there the client asks you for the same thing, like uh, he needs some change in that, he doesn't like some things on the page layout. So for the quick action, you just change the uh, page layout in the production environment. But whenever you will again deploy your scratch or, or your, the, your sandbox to the, env um, that the production environment, it will again overwrite that page layout, which should not be done. So to stay away from that case, you can simply uh, just deploy the page layout from the production to the sandbox. And we can also uh, provide some things from sandbox to a production environment using the tooling API. To, uh, as I stated, like it, it can be used to make the development tools. And there are numerous example of the tooling API apps available on App Exchange. There is another scenario, like if you want to delete some fields. So these are de multi-dependent fields and we do not know that where the fields are dependent. If you use the metadata API, it will allow you to use it, uh, but it will be a lengthy process. Like it will give you the whole WHTL file and you will have to check each one separately. But uh, the tooling API will provide you just dependencies of that field, which will be uh, easier and faster approach. Here is a small demo of using and consuming it. I have made this component with, where you can see the code coverage of each class. It will show you the class name uh, and the number of the lines covered and uncovered and the total percentage of that. So whenever you want to check the code coverage, you don't have to go to the and developer console and check it from there. So it will provide you the easy access and the code coverage percentage. So it's just a simple example to show the power of the tooling API, but there are numerous examples where you can use it. We can also, uh, um, before going to other part, I will show you that we can also consume it from non Salesforce environment like Postman. So here we can uh, make the authentication. It will provide us the token. Simply copy that to token and make the query. So here I have made the query like select number of lines and Apex class or trigger ID, its name and the co co covered lines and covered lines from there. So let's just make a query. So you can see that how fast it is simply uh, to look at better. I'm copying the code from there. Like here is a class Apex code coverage aggregate. So we can check number of lines covered and uncovered. 
like for this case here is a case manager class which has zero uncovered lines and the all the covered lines are with number here so you can access simply covered or uncovered lines using the tooling api 